Hi, my name is Dan, and this video is one in a series of videos that I'm doing about using physics in Unreal. And in this one, uh, I'm going to show you how to apply a local gravity uh, to objects in your game. Uh, so I've got a third person template set up, and I've got a few of the things that I've created just to uh, get us started. Uh, so uh, the first one is I've created a master uh, class, which is I've called my physics class. I'll just uh, give you a look at this. There's very little in here apart from the fact that we've got a um, a static mesh. And by default, I've set that to be a cube. Um, but I'm actually not going to use that class directly uh, because I have got uh, another class here, which is called my ball. And I can, any other object that I want to be moving around in my world, I will need to derive from my physics class. So this is um, the parent class is the My Physics class. I'm going to open the full editor for this. And all I've done here actually is I've changed the uh, the static mesh from the cube to a sphere, and I've put some rick on it. And I should have said that the static mesh object has got physics simulated in it, so that um, it is a, an object that will simulate physics. That's done in the master class here, in the My Physics class. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so the other thing that I've got is another blueprint, which is going to define a local gravity area. Um, and I've called it um, odd G area. And um, that is just a fairly large uh, collision box that I've got in there. And that will detect, obviously, when objects enter that and leave that. Now, the scripting we're going to do is in the um in that box okay so um let's uh close that down and look yes and we've got um an instance of the physics box uh of the sorry the the gravity box in this corner here it's just, just kind of tucked into the corner um and actually i've just on the fly decided i'm going to make some changes to this to the way that I do this, so that I'm going to have two uh, instances of, of this in different places. So let's have a look on the other side as well. Uh, and if I hold Alt, I should copy it as I move it. There we go. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set the local gravity uh, to be in different directions for each of these boxes. So um, let's see if we can manage to do that. That is the thing that I haven't practiced, so I'm doing this live in the video. So, yay for danger. Okay. Um, so, uh, oh, and the other thing is I've got uh, one instance of the physics ball, so the, the my ball, which is uh, stuck in midair above the box. And when we uh, press play, that will fall down through the box. You can see. So what I'm going to do is open up the uh, physics area so the gravity area class, and we'll have a play around it here. So um, <clears throat> what we're going to need to do to override gravity is to apply our own forces. Um, and if you want to know about know more about forces and you don't, then um, either now or in the near future, there will be a video appearing on my, on my stream about uh, using forces in Unreal. Uh, so I'm just going to assume that you're reasonably... Uh, okay with forces and and when we apply a force we need to apply it every frame so that will need to be done through event tick so we're going to need a list of objects that we're going to apply these forces to uh, so that's what we're going to create first uh, we're going to create a new variable and we're going to call it uh, my objects and uh, change that type to uh, the physics object, so my physics class I created, and I'm going to turn that into an array so it can keep a list of them. Uh, so when an actor uh, begins overlap, first of all, we're going to test whether it's uh, whether it is one of uh, these physical objects that we can use. So I'm going to do cast to my physics class, and if it is, we're going to add it. That's that array. Add and add unique is a, a good option here. Um, 
it should never try and add the same object twice, but just in case, uh, we're going to do that. And uh, similarly, when uh, when an object leaves, uh, we're going to check whether it's one of the physics class and then remove it from the list. So, cast to my physics class and um, it's not a remove item, not remove index because that inspects the number. Just to remove that. Um, so in this way, any object that I've uh, got in the world that derives from uh, my physics class will be worked on in this way. Um, and this is a, a great example of polymorphism at work. Um, so uh, let's just do a um, a report here so that we can uh, we can see that this is working. Let's have a test. So uh, print string. And we're going to assume that leave is going to work as well. So, uh, let's play. And ends has appeared. That means this ball's fallen and it's appeared in that object. And it's entered the second one there over there. So that's working. Okay. So the other thing we want to do is then apply an actual force. Um, and in fact, what we're going to do, we can do this all as one force because you can add forces together to apply them. But what we're going to do is we're going to do two separate forces. We're going to have one force which we can actually set uh, per instance, so we can um, we can create local gravity in whatever direction we want. But the other force we're going to do is we're going to have a um, a negative gravity to counteract the normal gravity of the world rather than switching it off. So I'm going to create two variables. Um, I'm going to create uh, one I'm going to call anti-gravity. And that needs to be a single variable. And we're going to change it to a vector. And we're going to create a second one, which is going to be the local gravity. And that one needs to be um, exposed so that we can change it. And I've just compiled so that we can set a default value for anti-gravity. So gravity is a acceleration of 980 centimeters per second per second in the negative z direction. So we need to apply the opposite. Um, and notice I've used separate words here. It's an acceleration, not a force, because the actual force depends on the, the mass of the object. Um, so we're going to need to get hold of that. Uh, before we apply the uh, apply the forces, um, so we're going to do these uh, vectors in terms of acceleration rather than in terms of force, uh, and, and we'll multiply it by the mass of the object before we apply it. Uh, so we want this to be 980 positive in the z direction for our anti gravity. Okay. Uh, so what do we want to do when we've uh, when we're applying this? We want to get hold of uh, the list of objects, and we're going to run through each one in turn. And uh, so that needs a for each loop. And uh, at this point, we want to take these two forces and add them together. Uh, because, as you know, and if you didn't know, then uh, I'm telling you, um, if you've got multiple forces acting on an object, you can add them all into one vector. And vectors are absolutely brilliant for using for things like this. Again, um, if you want to know more about vectors and you don't know about vectors, there will be or already is uh, a short series of these videos on using vectors in Unreal. So do look out for those. Um, so that's the resultant um, vector for acceleration. And we need to get hold of the uh, the mass. So, uh, first of all, we need to get the um, static component. Get static mesh. Um, I'm going to ask how busy it is, how heavy it is. So, get mass. And then we're going to multiply this vector by that mass to give us the force we need. And get no, multiply. multiply. Vector times float is what we want. There we go. 
So this resulting vector is the force that we want to apply. Um, and we want to we want to be applying it to the static mesh component. Um, and this is uh, one of the reasons why I've gone through this process of creating a masterclass, and I haven't just accessed these as uh, all objects as actors in the scene, is because I actually need a, a static mesh component to apply a force to. And I can't guarantee that all actors have a static mesh component, and it's quite fiddly to, uh, to work that out, which is why I've gone down this route. So, um, apply force. That's not the right wor word. Add force, I believe. There we go. Hopefully, you have that on there. Then that, I'll add that force to that. So, time for the proof of the pudding. Um, So I've got two of these boxes. That's another box. Selecting is always difficult. All you've got is a uh, uh, box. So let's not try. Let's uh, find it in here. With what do we call it? Odd area. Um, so it should be below. What area? That's that one. And it's given me a thing for the local gravity. So I want to uh, have my ball here go towards that far wall that's away from me. So that's in the negative y direction. And I'm going to use normal gravity amounts for this. So I'm going to um, say minus 980. <clears throat> and for this one, uh, we'll have it. Um, what should we do? Should we have it uh, floaty? Let's give that a go. We'll, um, we'll have it so that it's, it's just a very slight gravity in the z direction, minus z direction, so that it's, it's almost weightless, but it's just very slightly. So I'm just going to do minus 100. Um, that might not be a great example, but we'll try that out. Okay. So when I play, right, let's just talk about expectations. Um, and in fact, I'm going to turn this character around so we can watch when we start playing. Uh, so when I press play, that ball is being affected by normal gravity until it enters the box there. And at that point, uh, it should be affected by local gravity, which should pull it to the far wall. It will still have a little bit of momentum bringing it down in the Z direction. So it should roll along the floor, uh, along the new floor in that direction somewhat. And that is exactly what has happened. So as I try and move this about, <coughs> can I actually get it to move? There we go. But the gravity is local and it's pushing it down. Trying to get it now, it's floating in the air a bit. And as soon as it comes out, it drops down to the ground. So bring it in about there. And it's rolling up the wall. So, as you can see, that's quite an effective local gravity. And the other thing uh, we were going to do is we we're going to try it in the, the other box area. Um, and I'm just going to roll that over there. Um, Hopefully bring it down so it's not quite in the area, but it's only just dropping gently. And then it should have that <coughs> very slight gravity working on it. I'm working, is it lighter in this area? Hard to tell. Let's change that example then. Um, uh, so that it's, it's moving in a different direction. Uh, so let's cancel that out and we'll have it in there. Um, ah, positive Z, why not? Oh, sorry, positive X, uh, 980. So that's in this direction of the red arrow here. So that'll have gravity that will pull the ball out there, but then it will get out of the area. And let's once again turn our character around so we can watch. As that ball drops in. It's not worked. 
Um, I suspect that is because it's already in the box. Let's try again. Yes, it's entered. That's worked. So we might have fun with these boxes. Try and push this ball into this box. It pushes back down this way. Pushing against us. Can we get it to go? Yeah. Not sure. Pushing it that way. <clears throat> so much fun to be had with local gravity. Uh, so in the next video, I'm going to show you how to apply local gravity to the player character, which is considerably different because applying forces to the player character uh, it doesn't work very well, or in fact at all, because the physics has actually been disabled for the player character because of the, um, the use of the animations. Uh, so I'll see you then for that, but that's it from me for now. Mm -hmm.